I think we're good now. Oh! You know what's fun about doing these kind of videos? I feel like I'm sitting like my chair's like 10 inches off the ground. But otherwise, I would be headless. So, we'll go ahead and... <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. Sorry about that. Anyway, I have a update video for you guys today. So, hmm. a lot has been happening behind the scenes that you have not, well, that you're just not privy to. So, let's clear up that fog of confusion right now. So, firstly, I have an actual table now. If, if you've been around my, my uh, channel for some time, not a lot of time, but some time, you remember that I had a uh, couple boxes stacked up with a piece of plywood and a, a blanket over it? Yeah, well, this is actually a folding table, so it is perfect. So, I'm very happy about that. So, okay, cross that out. All right, um, some of my most popular videos I try and do with this dry board and utilize it almost like a chalkboard. The problem is lighting issues. I have tried everything to try and figure this out. The videos are far too dark to really for anyone to really see. And that's what most of my comments from my viewers say. Can you redo this video? Can you fix the lighting? Well, I'm working with a, a camcorder that was purchased in 2008, so it's an probably an antique by now um, and I have a dark house I mean it's just the way it is so I don't know how to get it, this to work but I'll show you some of the things that I've tried I've tried different light sources like this and different thingies like this and I've tried changing light bulbs I actually do have believe it or not I have eight LED light bulbs in my ceiling in my living room right now it's just a dark house so, let me show you. Here is... Ah, see, I've already illustrated one problem. The glare. <laughs> it, it seems like no matter what I did, just made it worse. And I just... Eh, you know. I haven't figured it out. If you are a uh, camera, you know, photography kind of person, you actually understand lighting, how do I not make this happen? Please put a comment down below because I cannot figure it out for the life of me. All sneak peek on the next video I'm going to film. I don't know whether it's going to be released next or not. More on that in a moment. So, there. And, uh, let's see. This is the second time I've filmed this, so you can actually see all the goodies on my table because I figured out I could lower my chair, as I alluded to earlier. So... Yeah, the camera angle was totally different in the last video. So, lighting issues. That brought me to a solution. That brought with it its own problems. Yes, I have a projector now. La la la. So, I can project my presentation on a projector screen and film that. Thing is, it makes things darker. And I have some hooking up issues with my computer. I need a different cable. So I need to figure out an adapter and uh, there we go. So I have a desktop so I can't just move it around. Um, so <laughs> you may see some of those. However, the audio works very well. It is has a pretty loud fan in it, but I did some make-believe teaching and you can hear my voice clearly over the fan. It's just kind of background droning noise. So, more on that down the road. Okay, projector. And the screen, got that. Alright. Now, the bird beaks, for different types of bird beaks for different reasons. That is by far my most popular video. Excuse the coffee. Mm. Anyway, um, I will remake that. And I have a few different ideas on how I want to do that. Um, right now, the biggest struggle 
with the projector is getting my drawings into the computer to project onto the screen to film. I think I figured it out and I like using my own illustrations that way I can get away from you know copyright issues and well I just like the I like all the different color options you have for a dry erase board darn it. So I've got a few ideas uh, I could draw draw them and then scan each picture on the computer. And da, 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 da. I just don't know of an efficient way of doing that. So I'm working on it. And I will remake that video so it's brighter and clearer. And I have... Ah, I'm not going to say that just yet. So that's that. I'll try and remake some of those other dry erase board videos as well. Okay, let me see here. I'm currently working on setting up a website and doing more public speaking things around the Wheeling, West Virginia area. So I'm making a class on plant identification currently. And more on that in a minute because it will be available to you as well on YouTube. Um, or whatever digital teaching media I can... I can find that makes that can do what I want it to do. Um, I'm looking to branch out a little bit and really pursue this. Maybe turn it into business. I have no idea. I do have a business plan I'm writing, so we'll see how that works. So if you're in the Wheeling, West Virginia area and uh, are interested in some of the things I teach or uh, just hearing me speak publicly, or if you want a speaker do contact me, Appalachian Naturalist at gmail.com. That's A P P A L A C H I A N N A T U R A L I S T at gmail.com. And we'll we'll work something out. Let's see here. Oh, the Christmas bird count is also going on currently. Go check that out. Get outside and do some birding. I have that written on my list twice. I'm so organized, I have things on my clipboard twice. How great is that? Okay, playlists. I'm going to be starting, I'm going to be launching a lot of different playlists this year. So, my goal is to make 12 videos in advance and release one per week. That way I have a revolving catalog of videos. Maybe. So, the two playlists that I really want to focus on this year is botany and the goal of that playlist is to arm you with everything you need to be dangerous in the world of botanical identification so you can go out in the woods and say aha you are blah, 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 blah. and I know this because of A, B, and C and its uses are A, B, and C 1, 2, and 3 its uses are 1, 2, and 3 that's my goal that that video um, no, no fungi. I'm not going to teach about that. They're too, too dangerous biochemically. If you want to learn about fungi, go find someone else. I don't like teaching about it, and I, I don't consider myself expert enough to teach about them. So no fungi, but all the other plants. Most, most of these plants are going to focus around Appalachian plants, New York through Georgia, the entire Appalachian mountain range. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of a lot of plants that grow here in West Virginia, just because they're right out in my backyard and I can do that. So botany playlist coming soon. It's always fun to cross something off a list, isn't it? All right. Um, next, I have no idea what I'm going to name this playlist yet. Actually, let me think about it. Coffee. Hmm. Nope. Still don't have any idea. So this is going to be a sort of like a help playlist for the students out there. I want my channel to be appropriate for children as well as adults. So, <laughs> so yeah, you're not going to see me dance around in a mascot uniform or anything like that. Um, but I do want to, to help students out. So if you have any any concepts that you're working with through the sciences. Biology is my strongest, but I can do a little bit of basic chemistry, a little bit of basic physics. Um, I'm not a very good mathematician, but yeah, I could probably throw something together if you're struggling with a concept. 
But um, do let me know. If you're, I don't know, say you're in high school and you're struggling with a phospholipid bilayer. I can do a video on that. So I can, I can help hopefully clear up that concept of a phospholipid bilayer. Um, or say Krebs cycle. Kevin, how on earth does a Krebs cycle work? Or what is photosystem 2? Now, I'm in a botany gear in my brain right now. So those are both botany examples. I can make a video on those concepts. Or, hmm, I'm really struggling on trophification. How does that work? I can do a video on that. So, again, contact me. Leave a comment down below. That way I can hopefully help you out. So, and that's kind of exciting for me to do because that throws me <laughs> off of my, uh, my comfort zone sometimes. And uh, it's, like, it's like a wild card. You never know what you're going to get. Now, I, I love teaching like that because it really, it really challenges me to keep everything in my brain. And, and a lot of times it, it forces me to go back and look at the basics, which is always something you should do in any discipline field, career, discipline, science, art, whatever. Um, philosophy. You should always go back and look at the fundamentals periodically. Just keep those in your in your mind. So, that's what I got for this update. And, like I said, another video coming up here soon. I showed you the board already. Um, let me go over the goodies I have on my table. Excluding the clipboard. And these stupid lights that don't do anything but get in the way. Um, so I have a little Velociraptor skeleton. And a fake dinosaur egg because why not? Does anyone remember these things from the 90s? It's like a little dinosaur you put together. And a little dinosaur egg and a little book and I think a poster. I have a couple of these. But anyway. That's that. I have a four-dimensional model of a shark. This time, I actually... The camera's further away than it was before. This time, I actually removed one of the lobes of the liver so you can see all the little internal organs. Can you see that? Oh, maybe. So I'm not just a biologist. I am also a science dork as well. Here I have a shell that is holding a very sharp Chinese chestnut that... <laughs> it is off. Oh, there's a little branch. Ow. I wish you could see the first version I, I filmed because I, I, I pricked myself on this thing probably like four times trying to show that to the camera. It was, it was amusing. But it wasn't a very good take, so this is a better take. I hope. And then, of course, an egg timer because well, I'm a man of science and sometimes you have to time things. Like eggs. And that's all the goodies I have on my table today. Um, just so that I leave you with something other than just an update, I'm going to talk about field journals. I did a whole video on field journals. And uh, this past year, my reptiles and amphibians bit the creek. So, I have... <laughs> you, Many of the pages, let me see, can you see this? Many of the pages are simply just stuck together and illegible. Actually, let me show you my favorite page. Okay, you see? This one is, in fact, my favorite page, the one with the giant hole right in the middle there. So I can't tell you what kind of turtle that is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... I had to buy another one. And let me show you, I think I went over this, but I'm going to go over it again. Uh, what I do to set up my field journal so that I can immediately start updating what's in my head because things do change taxonomically. Um, there's actually a couple couple changes in this one. This is the uh, fourth edition. So what I do is I go through the different chapters in the plates and I look at the range maps. Let me get, let me give you an example here. 
Uh, cool. Frogs. Here we go. Everybody likes frogs, right? So, here's a plate. Boom. In my state, only three of these frogs are present. So, I don't focus too much on the ones that I'm not likely to see. Chance favors a prepared mind, right? So, I have three species to focus on. On this page, it has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen species. So, I look at the range map. You are found in my state. I circle it. Now, when I'm out in the field, and I say, hmm, I find, I don't know, I find a snake. I can, where's the snake's in it? There they are. I can flip, I can kind of do a quick picture identification, which is not the best way. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Uh, but I can flip through and say, aha, here's two options. And it, it, it really helps you to learn exactly what you have in your area as well. So that's how I set up my field guides so that I can just quickly look at what's around. Now, if you live in another state, obviously, adjust it to your area. You can also uh, use a smaller, um, a smaller idea of this. You can look at this, obviously, you can look at your state and say, well, whatever county is about here, and then you can use that in your range map as well. I go by state just because it's a little, little easier for me. And sometimes I travel around within West Virginia. Um, so there you go. That's how I set up a brand new field guide. And I'll tell you what, what blew my mind. There's, there's. Let me see where is it? Alligator snappers. A lot has changed from there. From, yeah, from the one species we had before to the three we have now, or three subspecies. I, I believe they're subspecies. Hmm. Let me double check that now. Uh, <laughs> three, three species. Yep. So there's three species of alligator snap. <clears throat> three species of alligator snapping turtles now, where there used to be one. Which is interesting to me. We we don't have that species in West Virginia. So, there you go. Things in science are always changing. It's always good to update yourself and look at your fundamentals periodically. And that's all I got for today. Hmm. I guess I'll film another video. Alright, so this is Appalachian Naturalist, and I'll catch you later.